me, Arnold, enjoying the benefits of civilization, are you, Arnie? But remember, buddy, for this, you need to pay your electric bill on time. And I already warned you a million times, advertising is made just to suck every penny out of you. So go ahead. You just sit in the dark now. You deserve it. Oh, man, it hurts just looking at you. Okay, I have an idea. See, we're surrounded by trillions of bacteria that generate useless energy from the organic matter they feed on. So what I'm thinking is, let's build a bacterial power plant that uses your poop for fuel. Hmm, not enough for all your gadgets, is it? But what did you expect? Bacteria are really, really tiny. I know, let's embigify them. A bacterium the size of a cattle give us 46,000 times more energy. And we can get even more bacteria and more fuel. America produces 128 billion liters of sewage a day. This could provide electricity to an entire city and will also solve the problem of water purification. Ginormous halobacteria that feed on salt can provide free energy from the ocean and desalinate water for desert regions. Three and a half million tons of plastic are thrown away every day. The embigified Idianella sakaiensis can recycle this plastic into energy. Then you can open up an electric vehicle charging network. Unlike fuel energy, which annually emits 37 and a half billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere, bacterial energy is absolutely pure and emits only oxygen. Sounds like a great startup idea. Arnold, you've solved humanity's environmental problems and made trillions of dollars in the energy business to boot. Arnold! 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 Wake up! What? Are you dreaming about cat-sized bacteria again? You should know that cell division is only possible in microscopic organisms. Once a bacterium reaches its maximum size, it simply divides into two. This happens every 20 minutes. So in just six hours, one bacterium can multiply into 25,000. And your debts are multiplying at the same rate. Time to pay up, Arnold. Hurry, hurry. I hope you're not drinking the dirty water from the river. Good job, Arnie. <laughs> dirty water is the main cause of all diseases in the world. Due to the consumption of dirty water, 3.4 million people die worldwide each year. That's almost three times more than from car accidents and 20% more than from obesity. Good that you have drinking water. What? Eco-activists have taken all your plastic bottles. Now you have no water. But I see you're thirsty. Just don't drink from the river. Don't you see the signs? Oh, Arnie, you're going to regret this. One drop from the Ganges River contains 3.5 million E. coli bacteria, which is 110 times the norm. Despite this, 40% of the population of India, half a billion people, drink from the Ganges. And, of course, there are other harmful elements. Arnie, where are you? Oh, okay, I get it. Mild diarrhea, this is just the beginning. It's gonna get stronger and stronger. And that's already a problem. You're gonna have to invest. Yet, yeah, you could have simply purified the river water. You can purify river water through fabric. It will filter out sand and dirt. Boiling will help get rid of 99% of harmful microorganisms. And the most effective method is chemical purification. For example, using chlorine tablets. What do you think such water tastes like? Been watching a lot of Discovery, have you? Indeed, when there's nothing to drink, travelers do resort to urine. But in your case, it's not possible due to dehydration and a lack of strength. Does your tummy ache? This is the perfect chance to test my quantum resizer and find out from the inside what's hurting you. Put this helmet on and I'll connect your consciousness to your nano copy and insert you into your own body. But first take off your underpants. It's the fastest way to get you to your destination. Here we go! You ate a burrito which contained the eggs of some very smart tapeworms. 
Arnold, just look at this. They built a whole metropolis inside of you. They even built a zoo. Let's check out the zoo. Today's Monday, so there's a 50% discount. My God, this is a zoo of pathogenic viruses and bacteria. I admire your interlopers. Spanish flu, plague, Ebola, tuberculosis, swine and bird flu, and a bunch of other rare pathogens all in one place. Look, there's even my favorite, the little studied Barona virus, also known as sad horse disease. It mainly affects horses, cows, rabbits, and other animals. Arnold, I wouldn't put my fingers in the cage if I were you. It's suspected that the infection causes schizophrenia. Arnold, unfortunately, your stomach hurts due to parasites. Look, they're building a highway in your intestines, a water park in your bladder. If they build a data center in your head, you'll most likely kick the bucket because your head is so small. You need to figure out how to expel them from your body. The sooner, the better. If you open all the cells of this Pandora Zoo, most likely it'll help you expel the worms. Come on, Arnold, go ahead. It's better to cough from a couple of days of Ebola than live with these worms inside of you. Congratulations, Arnold, on the heroic exile of the parasites. I hope your immune system can cope with such a menagerie of diseases. Looks like someone had some fun last night. And something tells me your brain is probably just as much of a mess as this room. You really don't remember anything at all. Arnold, could it really be? Last night, did you finally become a real man? Congratulations, Arnold. This is your first alcohol intoxication. And these are the first unpleasant consequences of a new acquaintance. Arnold, how about a toast to your new friend? Ah, uh, well, I see, of course. If you gotta, you gotta. Oh, Arnold, did you really want to make a lifelong reminder of this event? At least you'll have something to tell your friends about later. As you can see, the consequences of alcohol intoxication don't just damage your health. They damage your bank account, too. Oh, you were unmatched in generosity last night, Arnold. You were the king of the party. Hmm. Now, where's your tooth? Anything ring a bell? Nothing? No? Arnold, you didn't know this, but drinking too much leads to unnecessary aggression. And you certainly paid a price for that. Ooh, you found a solution. Time to take aspirin. Oh, wait, no. You forgot to restock your first aid kit. But really, Arnold, all these troubles are just in your head. Mineral water is a miraculous thing. You're dehydrated. Just need to replenish the missing water from your body. What's with the jacuzzi? I totally understand if you want to quit drinking after last night, but not water. You didn't think it'd be that easy to escape your hangover, did you? Someone call Spielberg. We have a plot for a new Jaws. What is it, Arnold? Are you calling an ambulance? Ah, you decided to recharge your strength with delicious pizza. But you forgot about one thing. Booze breath. These are the decay products of ethanol that appear in the body after the liver has taken over its processing. One of them, acetic acid, has a particularly nasty smell. Hey Arnold, you sure you still want to sleep after eating? Sadly, you can forget about sleep. Cerebellar functions are impaired after alcohol intake. As soon as you close your eyes, the cerebellum ceases to have enough data for orientation in space and starts transmitting broken data to the cerebral cortex. Say hello to bed spins. Poor Arnold. It's a pity just to look at you. Let me give you one piece of advice. Right now, a cup of hot tea will save you. Wrap yourself in a warm blanket and fall asleep so soundly that no prince can possibly wake you up with his kiss. Arnold, I told you it would help. 
Hey, I see the late night beer bash is a big success. But don't forget, in the morning, you got a conference of below 60 IQ YouTubers. And if you're late, your career is toast. There's no time for the toilet. You gotta hold it, buddy. The bladder comfortably holds 150 to 200 milliliters of fluid. But after 400 to 500 milliliters, you'll feel some pressure. You must have drunk a lot. Eee, looks like the boss is in a bad mood. And for sure, he ain't gonna let anyone take bathroom breaks. Fluid is absorbed into the kidneys, then descends through the ureter into the bladder. You're probably feeling a bit stressed, Arno, because now you gotta hold the pee in with your muscles. I recommend you don't laugh, Arnold, or sneeze, or cough. Anything like that weakens the muscles, and you might start leaking. Hooray! Break time! You're saved! The average person goes tinkle six to eight times a day. Ooh, no luck there, Arnold. In ancient times, rules of decency allowed people to go wee-wee in public, and the division of toilets into men's and ladies only occurred in 1792. Okay, break's over, buddy. Now it's your turn to give your presentation. If you hold it in for a long time, the bladder walls can stretch, so you can hold even more pee pee. But this can be dangerous. Bacteria and acids in your urine can crawl back up into your kidneys, causing cystitis and pyelonephritis. It seems, Arnold, that everyone approves of your dissatisfaction with company policy. Come on, Arnold, I know you can hold it a little longer. Just 50 more talks and then you're free. Well, that's it. Time to go home. And Arnold, I advise you not to make any sudden movements. If your bladder is that full, it could pop. Yay, you're almost home. Now we just have to get through the morning rush hour. Move slowly. Oh no, it seems your neighbor's coming, Arnold. You know, the guy who likes to give everyone a big hug when they meet. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> wow, Arnold, congratulations. You died and went to heaven. Arnold, get in line and wait for St. Peter to let you in. Ooh, how cool is this? Hey, wow, look, is that John Lennon? No, wait, it's just Jesus. Here there's even a wall of paintings of God made by great historical artists. Here there's even... In ancient times, people believed that God was terrifying and bloodthirsty. For example, Aztecs constantly sacrificed people to their god Huitzilopochtli to make it rain. The ancient Greek gods personified human qualities or natural phenomena. Unfortunately, Arnie, in the Christian paradise, unlike the Muslim one, you don't get 72 virgins. But hey, look, right there, it's John Lennon! Or is that Jesus again? And here he is. He has many names. The Creator, Jehovah, Adonai, Yahweh, God. You probably shouldn't mess with his stuff, Arnie. Arnold, what are you thinking? You can't go in there. This is the control center for the whole world. Don't touch anything, Arnold. Oh, this is not good. Over the past few centuries, religious belief in the world has been dropping. And God is the most popular being in the world, has a lot of haters. You dare play God, Arnold. Man is simply too greedy for this role. There are lots of examples from history, and they all ended pretty badly. Arnold, stop! This ain't a joke, buddy. Great. Now everything's gone haywire. Fanatical faith has always led to wars. And now a nuclear crusade has begun. Arnold, stop before it's too late. Are you even listening to me? Phew, just in time. Hey, God, don't take this the wrong way, but thank God you're here. 
Arnold, looks like you're done. Let's fly to Mars. Your friend Elon has a program for this. Everything we need is already waiting for us on the big red planet. And we fly immediately while the window between Earth and Mars is still open. You ready? Okay then, fasten your seat belts and three, two, one, go. Although it's a really long flight, I promise you won't get bored. It's a meteor cluster, Arnie. Look out! They can damage the shuttle! Quickly, get to the cargo hold. It's the only place that can protect you. By the way, we're in a closed, sealed, unventilated area, and there's not much oxygen left, so try to save it. Perhaps, for the first time in a long time, you're truly lucky, Arnold. But alas, with you, it's all in vain. Legumes contain a lot of sucrose, which isn't digested in our stomachs. The most harmful types of sucrose lead to bloating. They're called raffinose, stachyose, and verbiscose. When they enter your intestines, bacteria begin to produce huge amounts of gas. So now you have to breathe your own farts. Serves you right, you moron. Come on, it's not so bad, Arnie. Breathe your fart. Reaction with hydrogen sulfide can prevent mitochondrial cell damage. That makes it possible to prevent the development of diseases such as arthritis, heart disease, and even stroke. So breathe deeply, Arnold. It's actually healthy. Well, I really didn't think you'd make it this far, buddy, but you're doing great, really. Hey, buddy, I thought I'd do something nice. I saved a soup for you. Nice. Skip it about the air Speeds on Mars can reach up to 100 meters a second. That's fast. Finally, some decent food. Open it quick. Let's see what's inside. Beans. Beans again. And again. And what's that there? What does it say? Hello, champion. I hope you have enough of this supply of healthy and very nutritious beans to wait until the next ship arrives. We'll send it when Mars and Earth next pass as close as possible to each other in about two years. Good luck! He seems to be absolutely not set up for shooting new oh. episodes. Get up, doofwad! Bad weather doesn't justify taking a day off. What? You don't want to go to work? Then I suggest you work in bed. When NASA was studying how zero gravity impacts a person, they paid $18,000 to a volunteer to lie in a bed for 70 days. Just don't even think about getting up, Arnie. I hired a sniper who will terminate you at your very first try. You will eat, drink, and do everything else while lying down. See ya, buddy! Hey, did you get any sleep? How are you doing? I guess not so cool. It looks like you're gaining weight. All the energy that comes from the food you eat isn't going anywhere. But bed sores, that's bad. Due to high blood pressure, blood stops flowing to the skin. Hold on, old sport. Good news, Arnold. You're close to the record set by Soviet scientists. 370 days in bed. Yeah, you don't look so hot. Every day, you're losing 5% of your muscle mass. On top of that, your bones are also damaged. And due to your lack of mobility, your bones don't repair and they quickly start deteriorating. And paradoxically, falling asleep lying down becomes impossible. Without a shift in activity, the brain doesn't know what time of day it is or when it's time to sleep. But this does have its perks. You can watch all your favorite shows over and over again. I'll leave you here now. Enjoy the show, Arnold. So you decided to eat only spicy food to become like your favorite superhero, the Blazing Surfer. You're in for a hell of a job.
Super spicy peppers, mega spicy wasabi chips, KFC wings. Oh, Arnold, I wish you'd be more careful. Capsaicin is responsible for the spiciness in all products. It affects the taste receptors, creating a sensation of burning. This triggers an adrenaline rush, increases heart rate, and raises body temperature. Spicy food satisfies hunger faster and increases energy expenditure, and this contributes to weight loss. But an excess of spicy food can provoke gastritis. That's indigestion. With regular consumption, the sensation of spiciness becomes dull. Arnie, this is your chance! A chili eating contest! And the blazing surfer's gonna be there! So, Arnie, your competitors are a Mexican and the devil himself. And you, Arnold, are gonna be eating the world's hottest chili, the Carolina Reaper. May God have mercy on you. Spicy food doesn't cause stomach diseases. The cause is harmful bacteria that enter the body with raw food products. If the illness isn't progressing, consuming spicy food can even help prevent the spread of bacteria. But remember, if spicy food causes discomfort, minimize its consumption. Keep smiling, Arnold! After all, spicy dishes contribute to the release of the happiness hormone. After coming into contact with the pepper, under no circumstances should you rub your eyes. You'll get a mucous membrane burn. And don't attempt to wash it down with water, as this will actually intensify the burning sensation. Milk can help. The citric acid present in milk, lemon, or orange can wash away capsaicin from the receptors and provide relief. Come on, Arnold, you can do it! Your idol is watching you! That's it! Huh? You won, Arnold! Well, there you go. You slept through it all. And what's this? Hey, Arnie, now you'll be eating only raw meat like a carnivore. Can you feel how quickly your levels of adrenaline and aggression are rising? Of course, it'll be a little difficult for you to chew, as human teeth aren't adapted to eating raw meat. Better cut it into small pieces, like the ancient Mongols did. In fact, the most famous dish made of raw meat, steak tartare, is named after them. Without cereals, vegetables, and fruits, the flow of glucose, which is fuel for your body, will stop. Your liver will start to process its fat stores to meet your body's energy needs, and you'll start to lose weight, up to five kilograms a week. Your muscles will start to dehydrate and dry out. That's why a meat diet is so popular among Hollywood celebrities and supermodels. Cholesterol levels in your blood will go up, and, well, let's face it, you'll be at increased risk of heart disease. Amino acids will fill your intestines, and they'll mix with bacteria from your skin, and that will lead to a super grungy body odor. Raw meat does contain some dangerous microorganisms, such as E. coli, salmonella, and listeria, and they can cause you to suffer from diarrhea, vomiting, and just general old heaviness in your stomach. But when your body finally adapts to such food, you'll feel a surge in energy and physical strength. The reason for this is increased testosterone and vitamin D levels. Even Bruce Lee himself, when preparing for fights, liked to have a tall glass of yummy fresh meat smoothie. Our ancient ancestors used to eat raw meat, but their lives changed forever when they figured out how to use fire and began cooking. That cut by two-thirds the time needed for digestion. So energy use moved from the stomach to the brain, and this triggered a cognitive revolution. Humans began to use much more abstract thinking and developed complex languages. And as a result, modern civilization developed. So eat, my dear Arnold, uh. eat! Didn't expect a little fly to get in your way, did ya? <laughs> hey, Arnold, I don't recommend messing with them. Who knows what they hey. could do? Oddly enough, flies can harm humans, and the most dangerous species are found in South and Central America, as well as in Africa.
For example, the bot fly, which breeds larvae inside animals. Ew. Or the horse stomach bot fly, a fly that gorges on horses. After penetrating inside the animal, the larvae begin to build nests right there in the stomach and intestines. Yuck! Then there's the sheep nose bot fly, a fly that lays larvae and sheep. They develop inside and then eat all the internal organs on their way through. But there's nothing more terrible than the larva man bot fly, a fly larva that chows down on humans. The fly eats only human meat and is particularly fond of savoring human flesh and especially brains. Yikes! Most often, the larvae enter the body with food and through open wounds, but they can also quietly slip in through the mouth, eyes, and ears. And now imagine if there could be tens of thousands of such larvae inside your body right now. I bet just two to three days would be enough to eat all your insides. There are just two ways to survive these little buggers without using special drugs. The first is to cover the affected area with fresh bacon. No, really. Then the larvae will crawl out to its scent. The second way is to cover the penetration site with a thick layer of Vaseline. Due to a lack of oxygen, the larvae will get stuck and suffocate. It worked! Arnie, you're still alive! But you do kind of look like Swiss cheese now. Then again, I bet you'll be just a little more careful with flies from now on. Hey? Did you sell your bath? Why? What? Is it all about the new PS5? You know, Arnie, one Dr. James Hamlin has shown it's possible not to wash for over five years. Let's do a challenge. The surface of our skin is home to a huge number of bacteria that form what's called the microbiome. It's understood that if you avoid using soap over an extended period of time, your microbiome balance will naturally stabilize. However, if you don't wash for even three days, you'll start to itch. Don't worry. Go get some air. Clearly, after a few days without a shower, you've started to stink something awful. Okay, not such a bad idea to buy a bunch of deodorant. The global trend of using fragrances to mask the body's smell first appeared in medieval Europe. At that time, people bathed on average only two times in their entire life, at birth and at death. Yes, the evil odor is gone, but frequent use of deodorants can cause allergies and shortness of breath, and the aluminum salts they use can even lead to the growth of cancer cells. Even in our time in our modern world, there are still people who wash themselves very rarely. In addition to the homeless, there are the residents of the far north, the Eskimos and the Chukchi. Are you feeling like a pile of garbage, Arnold? Permanent non-washing can lead you to a loss of self-esteem, and the kids next door would paint your house with graffiti and tease you about your stankiness. Where are you going, Arnold? Oh, I really hope you don't do anything stupid. I see you've decided to create a real tropical paradise for yourself. Don't you think the palm tree from the living room is a bit much? All right, here's some more food, drinks, and new friends. Rubber duckies! Have fun, Arnold. How about some beneficial bubbles? Hydro massage can mimic physical exercise such as squats, pull-ups, and push-ups. When vibrating, the muscle fibers contract, thereby increasing in volume. And in just 30 days, they'll reach their maximum strength and endurance level. You, Arnold, oh, lady. Easy one will definitely like it. Arnold, this is the first time I've seen you so happy. I suggest we continue the experiment. I'm gonna lock you in the bath for 30 days, but on one condition. I'm turning off the water and leaving you just the food you have right now. Yeah, you probably
probably shouldn't have eaten so much. If you don't get out of the bath for 30 days, apart from bacterial skin infections and your nails peeling, you'll have two options. Either complete dehydration and the loss of 1.3 gallons of water, or hyperhydration, when your body gets much more water than necessary, and which leads to swelling of the brain. Arnold, you're consuming food and water at an alarming rate. Surprisingly, due to your prolonged immersion in water, your skin will become dry and cracked, and it'll become really easy to get a skin infection in such dirty old water. Just one thing, Arnold, please, don't look at your hand. To spend 30 days in a bath sipping cocktails, your skin needs to be more like a seal. After all, they have 20% more subcutaneous fat than humans, which provides excellent waterproofing and protection. But now as a carrier of intestinal parasites dangerous for humans, you're unlikely to be welcome to such a party. Arnold, you really don't resemble a seal at all and are completely unsuited for aquatic life. But on the other hand, your bathroom is now a paradise for plants. Your palm tree has bloomed, mushrooms are growing on the ceiling, and it seems that somehow wheat has sprouted from your toilet. You have nothing to eat or drink. No. Please, Arnold, don't tell me you're planning to drink that water. It's full of gunk and microbes in your hair. Yuck! Don't say I didn't warn you, Arnold. 